Um, I'm just going to do the bank account and then we can head out because we need to get gas and whatnot and then... The bank account? Yeah, like update my bank account on oh, the computer yeah. real quick. Um, I don't need to, but I, I get antsy when I don't do it. And then we can day. leave? And then we could be ready to load up and leave, yeah. Okay. Okay. July 25th, 2022, the day I leave for Portland, Oregon with my mother. I've been looking forward to this trip for a long time now. It should be a getaway from this harsh world. Constantly, I'm reminded of the cruelness and uncertainty of the universe. And this year alone, things in my life have drastically changed. All of these things are completely out of my control, but I can't help but feel that I have this cloud of bad luck surrounding me wherever I go. I'm usually not a very paranoid person, but as it currently is, I can't help but be. I feel as if all of this is leading up to something. Chances are that that thing happens in Portland. Whether bad or good, I cannot say, but something's coming. I can feel it. I mean, otherwise, what's the point? Is there no meaning for everything that's happening? I mean, that can be true. Can it? If life is truly meaningless, that would both provide me with relief and make me terrified. I don't know which one I prefer. The idea that nothing matters and it's all futile to try and make something of your life since we will all die and be forgotten anyways. Or the fact that I am destined for something awful. I guess, if I had to choose one, it would be the former. In the shuttle, there are a bunch of other people packed in, all waiting to arrive at the airport for their departure. And although it might be rude, I can't help but look at these people. I can't help but wonder what their lives are like, what they are doing right now, what they're thinking right now. Because we're sharing this brief but vulnerable moment. This is not a moment that they'll remember. They're not going to look back on their vacation and be like, oh, remember when we took the shuttle to the airport? But I will. I will remember every single face on the shuttle. your step. As we make our descent towards Portland, Oregon, I'm kind of conflicted inside. While I feel this strange sense of relief that we're finally away from home and the uncertainty of the world back home, I'm also anxious and slightly paranoid. Everything is uncertain. The world's uncertain, especially in a new foreign city. I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't like not knowing what's going to happen. No matter how much I organize this trip or plan this trip, have an itinerary for this trip that I think we have to follow, something's gonna go wrong. And you know, maybe that won't be that bad. Maybe the sense of adventure will be fun, but maybe it will be terrifying. 
blow kids around. But, like, okay. So, where's where the map? This map's so confusing, right? Okay. The province park is our stop. But then there's Max Bloom Red Line to Portland City so Center. What's, like, there's two Max Blue and Red Lines. There's two different lines that are both blue and red. And I don't know, like, wait, what is this? Look, this line. So either if we go down there it'll be like an hour, so like ten to we'll still have like two hours. I say we just like go downtown, I guess we just push our luggage around with us. Well that's what I was saying. I'm sure we can find either something to snack on or a drink or a park we could chill at. Like, let's just do that. Wanna do that? Yeah, let's just do that. Due to the fact that we are not able to check into our Airbnb until noon, we walked around the city streets for the next couple hours, pulling our luggage around with us. We didn't have any place to go, anything to see. We were just observing the city, taking in the sights and the sounds without any destination. And even though this might seem like an annoyance, having to waste time, it was strangely freeing in a way. I have a regiment to follow, an itinerary to stick to. It didn't feel like a vacation. It didn't feel like we were tourists there to see certain things and then leave. It felt like we were not doing anything in particular, but just having a nice time. And this uncertainty of what was to come felt fun. I never felt that way about life before. I always thought there had to be some order to life. I always thought that, oh, I need to do this at this moment, and after this I'll do this, and I'll do this, and I'll do this, and I felt like order and structure was the only way to live, because every time I tried to do something without structure, it all fell apart. But in this one moment, in this part of my life, I realized that I didn't need to have structure all the time. I could just take life as it was coming to me. Just experience things as they were happening, live in the moment without worrying about what was to come or what just happened. But I couldn't live in this moment forever. Eventually, we arrived at our Airbnb, and I again felt like there needed to be some sort of order of the vacation. That we should go see this thing, and then go see this thing, and then go see this thing. But that gets tiring after a while. Alright. You should be good tonight. I'm gonna actually start doing stuff. Yes. Yeah. 18 hours later. We got this, dude. Yeah, we're gonna let this air, this room air out a little bit. Yeah, it's very bug spray. Oh god, it's very so <laughs> bad. How did you, like, it says bug spray on the bottle. How did you mistake the bug spray for sunscreen? Because. Here, give me a sandwich. When I grabbed the bottle in my head, I was thinking, you need sunscreen, you need sunscreen, you need sunscreen. And so I thought I packed the spray sunscreen. Yeah. I forgot the bottle spray. Uh huh. So I just grabbed the spray bottle and pissed it out without even reading it. I feel very safe walking underneath the scaffolding. I don't know, I guess I've just never walked underneath scaffolding before. Not a whole lot of scaffolding in. I feel like I've done way shittier, shady shit in my life. With this well, I'm not saying this is shady, I'm just saying like it's, like it, it's how you're supposed to do it, but. It's a little. Yeah. At the end of our long, hot, and stressful day, we took 
a walk down the riverfront. And during this walk, I was able to reflect on our day so far. And I realized something. My favorite moments, the moments that I liked the most and had the most fun during, were the times where I wasn't rushing around trying to go someplace or do something just to add structure to our day, where I wasn't following a strict itinerary of things that we had to do before we left. I had the most fun during the times where I just let life unfold, let things happen, no matter how they happen. It didn't matter, I didn't need to be stressed out about the bad things that may happen, I just needed to let things happen. I didn't need to live in this ultra-controlled environment where I had to make sure that every single aspect of our vacation was set in stone before we didn't know. I just needed to have fun. Beach trail is that way, connector trail is that way. Oh, the Magnolia collection is over this way. You want to do that? Sure. What's that? Is that just an overlook area? Visitor center. Oh, that's a loop. So it just loops you back to the yeah. visitor center. So we want to go this way. Yeah. there's a lot of stuff to see in Washington Park, one of my favorite things that I got to experience there were the nature trails. It was really freeing just to be able to walk in nature and allowed me to see the true beauty in the city. It wasn't just barren concrete city landscape, which gets tiring, it gets boring, it gets exhausting. We were able to just calm down and relax and walk, take everything in. But this was the first time I truly felt free here. That's cool, the roots are coming up. Yeah. I'm just taking a minute to kind of enjoy everything here. Yeah. It was a lot to take in, just walking around. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you think about it, flowers are a good metaphor for people. They start out as buds, and if given the right conditions and allowed to prosper, they eventually bloom and blossom into beautiful flowers. Granted, all flowers wither away and die like people, but the ones that aren't cared for wither away quicker. And I feel like right now, I'm not prospering because I'm not being given the right conditions. If I had the right conditions, if I was truly able to feel at peace with myself and free all the time, then maybe I would be able to blossom into a beautiful flower. But as it is now, I can't. I'm cool with just walking around. We haven't been over here, have we? No, I don't think so. Not in this area. No, none of this looks overly familiar. That's a cool church. Where? Right there. See it? Oh, yeah. 
I was looking to the right, not the I'm left. Like, how are you not seeing this? You're it's like, huge. Bob, it's right there. It's Do literally you see giant. The steeple. No, I don't. Oh, yeah, I, I do now. Are you fucking straight? You good with that? Yeah, what's this? What? You want to take a picture in front of the sign? Sure. Oh, turn around. Yeah, turn around. Yeah. It's hard coming, so I don't cross it. Look at that. See, I think that's the road to get to it up there. Yeah. Oh, they're going in there. I think that's the trail that they're, that the walker, what? I was so. The walker's going off that trail. That's the trail to the witch's castle. Can I, I'm going to sit down for a second. Go for it. Sorry, I need to sit so much. I'm just. You're not used to climbing uphill. No, I don't think I've ever In the really... elevation, the oxygen gets thinner. Yeah, I know. That's also why I've never really climbed up a hill before, so. You're fine. We're not up like a hill this big. Climbed up a hill, but not right. this big of a hill. Right. This is a really big hill. Oh. What? Juan's so proud of himself. For what did he do? He's sending me pictures of all the orders. Oh, that's funny. I love it. After our hike, we made our way to Pit Talk Mansion, and the strange thing about Pit Talk Mansion is that it's an old house from the 1900s, but it's entirely preserved in its original state, so it's made to look like what it would look like back in the 1900s, and people are still living in it. And it's a really strange experience to walk through, because it feels like it's just been lived in. Like, the people that were living here, like, they just left, you know? They, they just left the house or something. It feels like you're intruding on someone else's home. You're taking a look in at someone else's life, at the people who used to live here long ago. And not just people that used to live here, but the way that people lived back in the early 1900s. If you look back in the early 21st century, 100 years from now, will everything that we consider normal now be fossilized and preserved at, as some sort of museum attraction? It's just strange to think that the things you do now may be looked back upon a hundred years from now. Even the most mundane things, like how you wash your dishes, or how you store your food, or how you sleep.
会儿都都各拍一张。On our way to try to get to the trails around Pitok Mansion, we got a little lost and came upon an abandoned structure left to time. It was an off-limits area, but we didn't know that. Like, something like Pitok Mansion, it's cool, I guess, you know, seeing how things used to be preserved perfectly. But I think it's a lot cooler to see old things that are weathered and destroyed and rotten. It's more natural and really gives me a sense of peace that eventually all this is going to pass. Everything that we know now is going to rot away and new things are going to get built and the world will move on. Things won't be preserved perfectly for people to look at and all glad. I don't have to care so much about what I do now to make sure that people in the future will see it and be impressed and be like, whoa, the past was so cool, everyone was so amazing, they did so many cool things. No. I just need to do what I want to do in this life. And end it. It doesn't matter if I make some sort of an impact. Mom? Mom? Okay. Making sure I didn't lose you. That's the way it says to go? Doesn't look like there's anything over there. When you're done filming, stay right there. I want to try something. Okay. What do you want to try? Doing a panel from the ground up with you right there, because it'll take all the way up that tree, like to the top of where it fell. You want to do that? The top of the tree, huh? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, it was not. Oh, that's cool looking down. Yeah, you want to take a picture here? Yeah. I love this place so much. They stop with people. I wouldn't have done that, honestly, in Topeka. Fuck no, I would have No, that's nope. literally what no. I just said. I said I wouldn't do that in Topeka. Not my... We aren't risking our lives. No. Oh, that's goofy. Yeah. I don't know, something. I mean, don't worry about us. We don't want it. It's all yours. Probably gonna be at it for a while. Yeah. My hand's falling asleep, so. We got some cool footage. Oh, it's cool, now, dude. Yeah, look at those roots, though. Up there. Like behind you. There's this old structure nicknamed the Witch's Castle in the middle of the forest that used to be used as a public restroom back in the mid 20th century. However, now it's basically just an art mural and it's really cool to see all of these people contributing together all of their works in one place, like one big hub of art thing. But while I was there, I saw this thing that said every story ends as a ghost story and that got me thinking. I mean, I know it's just little slogans someone painted on here. But it's true, right? At the end of every story you die. Life can be unpredictable and scary and confusing, but no matter what, oh, there's, your name. there's always a finite conclusion. Every story ends as a ghost story. And while death scares a lot of people, and it scares me sometimes, 
it adds a lot of comfort to my life too because I know that no matter what goes wrong in my life, no matter how cruel the world may be, at the end of the day, it's all gonna end. And in my worst moments, that's a comforting thought. There is an ending to this. How far down does this go again? 30th. Oh, wow, that's a long stretch. Yeah, 15th to 30th Street. Oh, so there's more going on on the other side than that Yeah. Some big snacks like that. I know. Oh, you can get Well, apparently you break into a lot of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like that. No? Can we walk this way? Sure. I don't see why not. Even though I knew the vacation was going to be pulled eventually, it was still disappointing to see it have to end. I mean, here I wasn't so stressed out all the time. I wasn't so worried about everything that may happen or anything. Anything that can be left up to chance. The uncertainty of life always just scared me. But here, I was able to just live in the moment. But now, the feeling of anxiety and everything just crumbling down on top of me is coming back. Like, this won't last forever. Nothing lasts forever. No happiness can last forever. Even if I was to come live in Portland permanently or something, I want to be happy. I want to be truly happy. There's always going to be a feeling of worry and anxiety in my life, and I can't get rid of it. I can't just be like a kid, not worrying about everything that could happen or that may happen. Just living in the now, being happy now. Not worrying about the future, just focusing on the present. They don't know what's going to happen next. They're not worried about being an adult. They're hopeful and optimistic for the future. But when you grow up, you realize that the world, it sucks. Everything sucks. And no matter what you do to try to get away from it, it always creeps back onto you not to face the reality. Red line to Portland Airport. Línea roja al aeropuerto. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff to see at the airport. Like not something we can find, even if it's a snap. Not pretty. We're landing in Denver at 6:50, so we can stop somewhere. So everything will be over yeah. hours. Yeah. I'm not super hungry because I don't know. I'm really not either, and I don't know why. I have been last couple of days. Still straight. Yep. Our last stop in Portland was this video store called Movie Madness. It's one of the biggest in the country, and it has a lot of props and memorabilia from films. And even though I was stressed out and worried about having to go back home, here I'm surrounded by something that makes me truly happy. Movies. 
And that's how it was throughout this whole trip. I was surrounded by something that made me truly happy. Person I love the most, my mother. Not being so stressed out and worried all the time. Not trying to please everyone around her, but just being happy with herself. And that makes me happy. It makes me happy to see people I love being happy. Not saying that all of my stress comes from my mom. No, my stress comes from everything around me, my environment. And in order to be happy, in order to be at peace, I just need to be in a peaceful environment. So maybe it's good that I'm not always constantly surrounded by things that put me at peace. Vacation mentality where I'm just happy all the time won't be a constant. I'll be able to come back to it whenever I want to. Whenever I'm truly so stressed out that I just can't take it anymore, I can come back to a place like this. Like Portland, like this video store. I grabbed my two shirts. Okay. And some candy, because I haven't had dropped in like 10 years. I'm just having fun looking around. Mm -hmm. Tell me we need to head out. Mm, it's not quite noon yet. Okay, good. Yeah. There's a couple of stores now if you. Yeah. Those yeah, we can. Uh, I'm just. I don't know. In awe. <laughs> well, that and I just like looking around, you know? I'm not just in awe. I'm like actually like looking for stuff, you know? I mean, I can't get mm -hmm. anything, of course, but I'm still gonna see what all they have because. The library is the closest thing we have to a video rental store anymore, and it doesn't have a whole lot. It has some stuff, but not as much as I would wish it would have. Yeah. We need E10. E10? So. It's down a little ways, but... What, what time is it? Oh. I mean, we have plenty of it's time. It's only 1.15, that's what I was going to say. Do you want to grab yeah, something? Yeah, I am hungry. Nose and mouth, air and breathe normally. Secure the mask with elastic strap. Okay. Around the oxygen will be flowing. The plastic bag may not inflate. And uh, keep on wearing the mask until notified by uniform crew member. And if you are traveling with someone needing special assistance, put on your mask first. All right, for the, for the windows, thank you for your attention. Sit back for lunch. Flight time, 1.58 an hour and 58 minutes was up, was down into that way. Good things will come eventually. Maybe not now, maybe not for a while, but they will come. And this trip is evident of that, that the world isn't happiness and rainbows, but the world isn't all doom and gloom either. The world's beautiful. It's unpredictable, but it's beautiful. I don't know what the future holds. I never will know what the future holds, and even though that's scary, it's also okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right, bud. We made it. Yeah. If nothing else, this trip's been full of adventures, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably a ways away. I can't remember where it's at here. Is it even in like the uh like sea gates or is it all the way in the main building? I really don't remember. I really don't. It's been a well, really not that long since I flown Denver, but my memory's kind of crap. Yeah, then you take the medicine that gives you memory loss or whatever. It's the one I'm on, yeah. <laughs> that can, and I feel like it's proving true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have a good ride. Yeah, enjoy your family time. <laughs> they were so sweet. And I was like, I told the lady in front, I was just like, you know, this whole plane's been so nice. They just, they, if you don't know that they're trying to run somewhere, they don't know. Yeah. And it wasn't like I was rude or anything. I was like, hey guys. Yeah. No, I heard you. These people are leisurely running. You don't sprint in an airport? Oh, I do. In Minnesota, I did. Yeah, these people are like leisurely running though. They're no, not, like, straight up like sprinting. Yeah, I would sprint like hardcore. So the guy had to go all the way down to the very end of the uh -huh. gates here. Dang, it's crazy. I wonder if he made it. I really hope he did. Oh, those signs say baggage claim this way. All the way down there, do you see them? Yeah. All right, bud, how does it feel? Feels we good. We made it. We made it. We made it. First order business, food. All right. You ready to go back home, I guess? Well, our master's free checking is always free to open and never requires The commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's a commercial, Mom. I didn't have anything played. I have it. Well, that's because we had it on the radio when we came up here. Welcome to Goofball. It was on radio. Oh my Remember? god. It's oh FM my god. Radio. I'm done. I'm fucking done. <laughs> Could you see? <laughs> you look so concerned. <laughs> You look tense. I'm just like, where the fuck are the people in my car right now? 